Uh, now we're going to use Photoshop for comic style rendering. So why would we use Photoshop? We're still using ZBrush to render the materials, but sometimes it's easier just to manipulate the images in Photoshop rather than in ZBrush. Um, it doesn't have to be Photoshop, and most image editing software will work. You could have started this guide using describing this method because it allows you to ditch out a number of large options, but uh, test various combinations of colors. It was just to make the models look very cool, but if you thought it was necessary to understand the light cap and matte cap creation process beforehand, because now what we're gonna be doing is kind of working blind. Now you can go into Photoshop, save the image, import in the uh, ZBrush, apply it to your object, and then you can kind of just go from there, but it's not quite as on the fly or editable as the matte cap, uh, light cap stuff we were doing. So what you can do is start out in light cap and just kind of dial it in and then take your image that you created from your matte cap here and then take this into Photoshop and kind of match it and play around with it and refine it from there if you'd like. Okay, so let's begin by opening the Photoshop matte cap template. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go to preferences, initialize ZBrush. Let's begin by opening the Photoshop matte cap template PSD that I prepared for you. So we're gonna go into Photoshop here and I'm using Photoshop CC. This is another thing. So early this morning, I got up and I was um, I was having problems with the laptop. So if we take this Photoshop here, let's go ahead and dock this to the left. So basically, uh, yeah, so when we open up the Photoshop matte cap template PSD, we're gonna go into resources here and we got the Photoshop templates. Here's the Photoshop matte cap template. Um, this is a smart object. You're gonna see over here, double click to edit. You can double click this and this goes to this one. And then uh, you can edit this thing all you want and then go back, you can save it and then go back and then it'll update your original file. However, for some reason when I was in here and I was in the shapes uh, section right here, so you can have your shape selection here. You can drag out these different shapes to create these. It was being really slow. So what I basically had to do, just in case this happens to anybody else for some reason, um, you're gonna go to C users and privilege update or roaming Photoshop CC 2017. There's Photoshop CC 2017 settings. And you're, I just drag this out and basically it just resets all of your settings. So it's kind of a pain, but it did resolve that issue. Cause basically I was clicking on these and it was taking like 10 seconds to allow me to edit the shapes here. So we're gonna start here. Uh, we see a couple of layers here in a background and the smart M objects in the image. So if you double click on the smart object, it opens in a second document that you can edit and then you can hit control S to save. When you're saved, you can go back to the template and then you can save that as a JPEG to import into ZBrush. Um, within the smart object, you see a few layers of objects that make up the material. And there's just these layers over here created. So we're gonna be making this pretty soon here. With this approach, we're gonna create the same image we created before with the matte cap creator, but this time we're gonna have much more control over the transition between the colors. To start, delete or turn off the layers in the smart objects, leaving just the background and the mask. So here's the mask at the top, and then here's the background, BG. We're gonna take all these and just drag them to the trash. Just shift select all those and drag them to the trash. Uh, I found out the easiest way to build up an image for a matte cap is to work from the back to the front. So if your base, and then uh, start adding in your colors around that. So first we create the color is gonna be the dark outline. Create a new layer and let's create a circle using the ellipse tool, which is U. And then this one here, you can just click. If you have rectangle selected, just click and hold and then go to the ellipse tool here. Uh, hold shift to create a perfect circle. And then if you hold down alt, that'll actually drag out from the center of where you clicked. And you can use spacebar to move this around. Um, after you create it, you can also hit control T and transform it into place. So we can just kind of move this thing around if we want to, or we can just go ahead and drop it. So we'll go ahead and just drop this thing here. And then if we want to change the color, I'm going to go to this fill and we're just going to turn that to black. Okay. And then if we do, we can do control T that goes into transform mode. And now we can kind of just dial this into place. We're going to just kind of move this here and I'm holding down shift as well to kind of just move the stuff around and we can kind of put that right in there. Hit enter to go out of transform mode and there's our shape. Uh, fill this with black or use your reference image to color pick the area where it the uh, color that you want. The next layer will be the color, next color inward. So this is basically gonna be our outline. Uh, we're gonna do a dark purple. Uh, I like to open up a reference image as a separate document so I can keep it side by side. So we can go ahead, let me just put that reference image in here. Streaming, comic rendering, here's our sample color here. And actually, I mean, we can use this, but we can also just kind of have this floating around or we can go to file, open, and we'll go to streaming here. Comic style rendering, we'll just have this uh, open over here maybe. All right, good enough. Next layer will be the next color inward. So go ahead and uh, activate this document here. Using the same process as before, create a smaller purple silica to end up something like this. Tip, if you created a shape using the ellipse tool, you can simply press control J to duplicate it and then control T to scale it and reposition, then just change the color. So we can take this ellipse. I'm just gonna drag it to this uh, new one to make a copy. And then I'm gonna do control T. And again, if I hold down shift, that'll constrain it. If I hold down alt, 
that'll constrain it from the middle and we can just kind of pull this in hit enter and then with this shape selected we can go to fill and then we can just sample um, from here let's go ahead and do this sample color here and we'll just sample uh, the dark purple along the side here there we go perfect and now when we go to fill we can just uh, sample that color there okay so there's the dark purple here save the smart object close it and save the document as a JPEG to the desktop for quick access switch back to ZBrush and import the J JPEG so when we're done working on this hit control s to save it and then we can go ahead and close this and this will go ahead and open up this one here we're gonna do control shift s and then we can save this as a JPEG which we're just gonna throw into our uh, comic rendering base here and we'll call this test purple <laughs> and we'll just go ahead and make that quality of 12 why not go back into ZBrush we're gonna go to texture import and we're gonna go back to our test purple there so we've got it imported here and we're JPEG into a texture of the matte cap and then from the modifier sub tech sub palette clip the textures import here you could also instead of going into textures import you could also go down here and do import and that'll import the purple and then you just select it so now we've replaced this let's go ahead and do our load tool since we've initialized here Kepler bust there we go so now we have our object here uh, not super exciting yet but we can see the out the outer outline in here and let's go ahead and go back to our document and change that range back down to zero so you can kind of see a little bit better uh, the outer black ring is giving us some outlines in the model even when the rest is a flat purple color at this point you can decide if you want a thicker or thinner outlines and change the size of the inner purple circle to make the outline bigger or smaller um, and this is we you know going in there the one where it kind of shrinks the sides in doesn't look like it's doing much there but uh, you can go in there and make it thicker in Photoshop and that'll give you a more uh, a broader outline uh, I'll leave it as it is because thickness that outline color will be tweaked within ZBrush and we'll explore the attribute of the net cap cool so switch back to Photoshop create the next layer with the blue color looking at the reference if we concentrate in the rounded areas like the head the purple color gets thinner towards the top and the bottom so for the next color I scale it in on proportionally to mimic that effect so we'll hop back over into Photoshop here and then we'll go ahead double click this to go back into editing it and then we're going to hit, go ahead and um, duplicate this I don't have any of my hotkeys and then we'll go ahead and control T and we'll go ahead and move this in here and for the fill we can go ahead and just do the a uh, little bit of a lighter color here there's got to be a better way to sample this stuff there we go okay so we've kind of scaled this in again if you do control T that's just doing an overall transform and you can hold down shift and that'll keep it proportional and then alt to go from the center here so you want to do perfectly center hold down alt and you can kind of scale that in although I've picked the wrong color here so we want this purple here so let's go ahead and sample that slightly darker purple there and then when we go back into our fill layer here we'll just grab that last one alrighty uh, next layer could be for the lighter blue color the lighter purple but looks like the lighter blue is sitting on top of the lighter purple and since we're working from back to front the lighter purple seems like the best option since I'm using shapes I can use the direct selection tool to manipulate the points in the ellipse after the fact so we'll go ahead and um, so we've got this lighter color here let's go ahead and uh, modify this a little bit we're gonna make this a little bit wider and again you're just kind of matching the shape here so we'll kind of do this here and now if we duplicate this one and now we want to do the slightly darker one here so let's go ahead and we're gonna first of all we're gonna make it smaller overall so we're gonna just overall make it a little bit smaller and then we're gonna change the shape a little bit so here it is smaller and then we go into that fill and we've already sampled the darker one no we haven't so we'll go ahead and go to the eyedropper tool sample that darker one here hit U and then go back to fill and just grab that darker one here so there's our darker one and now at this one if we go in here to these manipulator we can do the direct selection tool so just click and hold it's A and do direct selection and then you can go through here and you can start picking um, any one of these points individually life shape into a regular path there we go that's fine and now you can do the, you know you can change these transitions here so these little um, you can click these dots and that'll move one dot around so if you want to kind of change that shape and then you can grab these little handles here and you can kind of bezier curve these things around to kind of manipulate these shapes as well hit enter to go ahead and lock that in uh, now let's add the lighter blue on the top so it looks like the darks here so this dark it just kind of creates the shape here which is what we're creating then we're gonna put a big fat lighter color right on top of this thing here so we're gonna take this ellipse copy here drag it on top and then we're just gonna scale this overall down holding down shift and let's we'll kind of move this into place and because this is on top of everything that's why I re-layered re it here and then we'll go back into our eyedropper tool we'll do this lighter color here 
and then we'll hit U, and then for this fill, we'll grab that lighter color there. Uh, looks like another horizontally squashed circle. You can also see a little bit of the light of the light purple on the left as well. So yeah, it looks about right. Finally, we add a little bit, a teeny bit of green that does a subtle highlight towards the top. Let's go ahead and just duplicate this one. And we'll do an overall control T transition and we'll just make a little highlight right up here. Um, you're going to see it looks like it, the highlight kind of gets squashed as it approaches these. So we'll go ahead and manipulate and edit this a little bit more. So we'll go ahead and sample that one and then we'll go ahead and make that the lighter green here. And then again, we'll go back in here to the individual manipulator tool and we'll kind of squash this top out here. Cool. Uh, let's save the image and test it in ZBrush with our matte cap, just replacing the previous image. So if we're done with this, we'll hit Control S, and then we'll close that out. Here it is, our updated one, Control Shift S. We'll change this to a JPEG here, and we will save it over this test purple. Cool. Go back into ZBrush. Um, instead of going into the texture, we'll just go right into here, go to Import, grab your new one updated. There we go, look at that. Comic book style. Reference, matte cap image. Looks pretty close, man. It was pretty decent given the amount of time you can spend creating the images in Photoshop. It's also looking very close to our reference images and you can quickly tweak any of the color, size, and shapes of the layers and completely change the matcap really fast. If you think that the model is looking too flat, for instance, you can add a tiny bit of shading to divide the volume a little bit more. Oh, cool. So uh, I prefer the flat look as it resembles a comic book style, but if you want to add a little bit of color shading transition here, we can um, assign some inner shadows and set it to multiply and save a new image. Create an image in Photoshop. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so flat at shadow. Um, create a new white circle. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back into Photoshop. Let's just do that real quick. So a new white circle, circle here. Let's double click to edit this. And we'll take this ellipse here. I'm going to duplicate this off the black one that we made originally. Go up here. And for this fill, I'm going to do just white. Hit enter. And assign some inner shadows and set it to multiply. So we double click this ellipse. Over here in the blank area here, we can do an inner shadow. So we'll do inner shadow here, select that. So we can go to the parameters here and uh, blend mode is set to multiply. And you can kind of see what we're doing is we change that distance and the choke it will make it harsher or softer. And then the size will kind of blur it out. So if we do that, and then we can take this blending mode here and go into multiply, whoops, multiply. That kind of gives us a soft, subtle gradient here. So let's go ahead and um, if we double click inner shadow now, that'll take us directly to these. Let's go ahead and really crank up that distance here so we can kind of see what it's doing. Okay. And if you don't want it to affect your highlight here, just drag this specular and just put it on top here. So that way it won't affect that sharp highlight, but it'll kind of affect the shading on the other stuff. So once we're good with that, go ahead and hit control S, close that out. And then we'll do control shift S, save as a JPEG here. And then we'll do test soft. Okay, go back into ZBrush here, grab this one, import test soft. And now you can see we're getting a soft kind of gradient. Not under, it's under the specular, but it's going to affect uh, the top parts and uh, the bottom parts of this colors here. I think we're getting very close to a particular style we're aiming for. All we did in the section was create an image in Photoshop. Yep. Now I'm going to tweak our material. So now we've done the heavy lifting in Photoshop, and now we're going to use the material settings within ZBrush to kind of tweak this out a little bit. Um, at this point, it's good if you're around 70% happy. Switch back to ZBrush to make sure your recently created image loaded in the matte cap. Uh, double check all the modifiers are set to default values. So I think we're good. Everything looks like it's zeroed or one out. Remember I said we can change the thickness of the outline. We can do that within ZBrush without drawing a new image in a thicker border in Photoshop. Okay.